Rev up your engine! Jabram says, when checking out a used car, how can you tell if a junkyard engine or transmission has been installed and whether it's good? That's a real stinker because if you ever buy a junkyard engine or transmission, you're pretty much just taking potluck. You know, you're rolling a dice and hoping snake eyes doesn't show up for you. What they generally do in junkyards is as soon as they get a vehicle in, they pull the engine and transmission, they stick it inside in a warehouse so the rain doesn't rot them, and so you don't know how many miles it's really got out of it. I knew a guy ran a junkyard, and that's what he would always do, and it wouldn't matter if he pulled it out of a vehicle that had 197,000 miles on it. He would write with their little marker, you know, 57621, and pretend that it had 56,000 miles when he sold it to some and do the same thing with the transmissions. Now, when you get one used, you can do stuff like you pull the oil pan, pull the valve cover, see if they're full of sludge, automatic transmission, you could drop the pan, see how dirty the fluid, if there's metal filings inside the transmission, and if there was, you wouldn't buy it, but you still wouldn't know until you plugged it in and actually ran the thing in a vehicle. It's just a gamble, and you got no way of telling if you're buying a used vehicle that has used parts on it, what shape they were in, unless you physically take them apart. And I wouldn't go that far. I mean, if you're buying a used car and a guy says, oh, we got a used engine and transmission in it, you don't pay much money for it. Because that meant he was so cheap, he didn't want to fix it right. He just wanted to put a junker used engine or transmission in it. So I wouldn't assume the car was taken very good care of in the first place. I wouldn't even buy it. Well, you knew it would only be a matter of time, and it wasn't very much time, until they made an insane Ford Mach-E electric car. This particular one has seven motors and 1,400 horsepower. Yes, 1,400 horsepower. I mean, the regular Mustangs, of course, whenever they came out, people wanted to soup them up, make them faster. Shelby modified them, made them faster and faster. Well, this is a one-off that Ford has made. It has seven electric motors, but it's at 1,400 horsepower. And if you know anything about electric motors, like Morris telling you, they have instant power and torque all the time. As soon as you turn it on, this thing would be an absolute screamer. The only thing is, there's only one of them out there. Ford's testing out in a North Carolina track. They're trying to drift it. They're doing all kinds of trials with it. They're actually using it as an experimental vehicle to see how far they can make things go. They're trying out drifting, high-speed racing, and interestingly, they're using these electric motors that are called pancake motors. They're like a pancake, only instead of sitting flat like a pancake, they're sitting vertical. They're not horizontal, they're vertical. So they can stack these things together to get as much power as they want in whatever area they want to stick them into. Kind of like the way they stack electric batteries in some of the more modern cars. They make batteries so they're stackable. So if you want a certain range, you have a certain amount of them. You want a bigger range, you just stack more on top of each other. Each motor puts out 214 horsepower. So when you put a whole bunch of them together, you get a lot of horsepower. They're using seven of them in this thing. Now it is a one-off, but it was only a matter of time that they're going to try to turn the Mustang Mach-E, which is actually an SUV, into more of a Mustang Mustang for Dragon and racing around. Who knows? If they got popular, maybe they'll make a certain amount of them for people. There's plenty of guys out there that want a 1,400 horsepower car. I mean, look at the guys that make hyper cars. Some of them make 10, 15, 8 of them a year or something. So if they wanted to, I suppose they could sell these to the public. And I know there's going to be somebody out there who wants to buy one now that they've heard about it. Check this out. You think that's a Ford F-150 Raptor? Well, no. It's called the Big General by a company called Photon. And guess what? It's a Chinese car brand. <laughs> what do they say? Imitation is a serious form of flattery. Well, they must be flattering Ford by making pretty much a look-alike copy of the F-150 Raptor. As you can see, it looks just like one, only instead of Ford, it says Photon. Now, unfortunately, this only looks like a Raptor. It certainly can't perform. It's nothing like a Ford Raptor with all that power and stuff. Photon Big J. General is powered either by a two liter turbocharged gasoline engine or a two and a half liter turbocharged diesel engine, and it has an eight speed manual transmission only. This thing is not going to be like the real Ford Raptors, racy, zippy, screaming around. It looks like one, but it would be an absolute turd compared to it. <laughs> I mean, they got a little bitty four cylinder gasoline or diesel engine in the thing, something that big. It's, it's not going to go all that 
that fast. Of course, they don't sell these things in the United States. I'm assuming if they did, Ford would sue them and win just like Jeep sued a Chinese company that was making these Jeeps that looked just like Jeeps. And then they said, you can't sell them here anymore. And they wouldn't let them sell them in the United States. So I'm sure they're not going to bring them in, but they're selling big in the Philippines. As you can see, I mean, it looks like an F-150 Raptor, but no, it's a photon big general, but uh, they certainly did make a copy of it. There's no arguing that. Axel Sweden says, thanks for your informative videos. My dad's got no six Hyundai Sonata V6. When it drives, it makes a rattling, scraping noise, 2,000 25 RPM comes from under the hood. If I rev it or let go of the throttle, the noise goes away. There's no sound at all when revving the engine in neutral. It makes me think it has to do with the transmission. What's your take on it? Well, my first take is it's an 06 Hyundai Sonata. This is why I tell people not to buy Korean cars because they can be okay for a while. When they get old like that, and it's a 14 year old V6, the engines tend to wear out and the transmissions. Now, in your case, you want to pray that it's like a CV joint on the drive shaft that's doing it. Have that checked, because if it isn't, odds are it is the transmission, and you would have to have it rebuilt, and it would cost many, many, many thousands of dollars to do it. When I pinpoint those things, I use my machine that's called a chassis ear. You can get them on eBay used. You can buy new ones for 150 bucks or so. They come with a bunch of transmitters, four of them, and you clamp them on different parts of the car, and then you wear headphones, and you can go one, two, three, four with a little receiver to click to listen to that particular one. And if you find the ones you put on the transmission is where the loud noise is coming from, you know it's inside the transmission. And then basically, with that clunker, I'd sell it fast. I wouldn't put any money into it. It's not worth putting thousands and thousands rebuilding the transmission on one of those things. And seven, a joker says, Scotty, my 2011 Ford Explorer misfires when I accelerate. It hesitates. What should I do? So many things can make a car misfire. You always start with the basics. Spark plugs, check the ignition coils, change the fuel filter. If the fuel filter is clogged, you won't get enough fuel. And when it doesn't get enough fuel, it'll misfire because there's not enough fuel. And and when it fires, it doesn't fire correctly. Then pray. I know those explorers. It's not a worn out timing chain. When the timing chains wear out, they misfire like mad. And that's relatively easy to check. You can have any guy hook up a scan tool, and look at the ignition timing. And if it's bouncing all over the place, you know that the timing chain's worn and that makes the timing bounce all over the place. Then you got to rebuild the engine. So pray it's an easy thing and not an expensive engine thing. Because I mean, it's 10 years old. And if it's got a lot of miles, it can often be the timing chains are worn out. You really got to rebuild the whole engine for that. Grizzly Goat says, Scotty, watch one of your videos and say, KW engine flush can help fix noisy lifters. I got a 99 Mercedes ML430, 202,000 miles, noisy lifters. Might cause misfires. Should I use the flush? Well, go ahead and try. Follow directions on the can to the T. Change the engine oil and filter and pray. Because with that kind of mileage, odds are those lifters are just flat worn out. And when the lifters are worn, a lot of times the cams drive them. The cams are also worn. It would cost a fortune to rebuild that engine, but give it a try, you know? And if it works, you know what my advice would be? Sell the car as fast as you can. It might not last long. <laughs> If you don't want noise, you get an old Mercedes like that with a noisy engine, you're talking big, big money repairs. And I mean, if it's just a toy, if it does quiet it down, if I were you, I'd sell that thing as fast as I can. Because I had a customer do that years ago, and he did it and thought, oh, great, it's gone. The noise is gone. About two months later, the noise came right back. So <laughs> if it helps it, sell it quick. <laughs> Russell, that says, uh, Scotty, I purchased the 2013 Cyan XD, 98,000 miles. Runs great, but bad thing is it doesn't have a temperature gauge, just the light that warns you if it overheats. Would it be a good idea to put one on? I would. I mean, they just didn't put them on because it was cheaper to make them that way. You can go after Mark and get a nice little gauge you can mount on the dash or wherever you want, a standing unit to screw in. It's not rocket science. You find one, just put it in. I would because it's a handy thing, and it gives you a good idea how your engine is doing. Maybe it's not overheating, but maybe it runs right in the middle all the time and all of a sudden it starts running like three quarters it's not going to make the light come on because it's not technically overheating but it's running hotter than it should so you would know something's going on with the vehicle and it's better to fix overheating problems when they're starting to get worse than when they went the whole way and you can blow your engine up i would definitely put them in this they just made them that way because it's cheaper to make them the lot of american cars did that years ago too and it's just a cheap way to make a car you could buy the stuff to bolt on not that hard to put on then you'd have peace of mind and knowing what the temperature is at all times so you could see what was happening. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!